Oh, this is going to be fun. In just a moment, you'll meet the executive director of the college football playoff. Watson, as you know, that's Bill Hancock, and he has broken new ground. He is the only guest, and I believe he will be the only one this week, who brought food for me. That's big. <laughs> he knows how to get close to your heart, bud. Hey, Watson. <laughs> Absolutely. Watson, hey, Bill. I, I promised him some uh, bacon ramp shrimp. <laughs> but they had no bacon ranch shrimp. So <laughs> what he got was a spring roll and a little taco. Let That's me tell perfect. you something. <laughs> Having had no lunch, it was really good. <laughs> so how many of these have you done today? Um, Seven. Not very many. Not too many. No. Okay. And uh, George and I were talking before, Watson, you know how these kind of things go. It's like a little bit like a family reunion. Our class reunion where you get to see old friends and we got cut off by the pandemic and didn't see people for a while. And just, it's good to be back together. So I'm going to ask a dumb question here. You have all these schools now that have sports administration uh, degrees and, and young people that want to get into this business. How in the world did you become the executive director of the playoff? A lot of people made mistakes. <laughs> That's a great answer. I started off. I started off as an SID, a student SID in my college days, because I needed a job. Had no idea what I wanted to do in my life, and this job, I heard about it, and you could be a student worker in the sports information office. And I signed up, and they hired me, and I thought this is great. I would pay them but they turned out to pay me. Sure. So I came up through the SID world, then I got to be director of the NCAA Final Four, Men's Final Four, and then CFP people came calling, BCS people came calling back in 05, and here I am talking to you guys. And it is you deal with a lot of controversy, you know, is this number right, is that number right, but is the job fun? Yeah, the job is fun. I, I came up in – operations and putting on games and taking care of teams. And, and now we have people on our staff to do that. And I'm kind of the politics guy, but it's still fun. I, I have the best job in America. I mean, think about it. I, I, I live, eat and breathe college football every, every day, 24 seven. There's no better job than that, except maybe yours, George. Really? Keep going. I want to hear this. <laughs> this will be good. No, I, I'm, I, I love what I do. I'm just yeah. lucky. So before that, you brought up the final four and that tournament has been blessed with some incredible years. Uh, you know, when you look back at the Valvano upset of Houston and Villanova beating Georgetown. And I'm just curious in the years that you were involved in it, what is your greatest memory? As far as a game goes, it was probably Princeton UCLA. Uh, when Princeton backdoored the defending champion, you know, almost to the almost to the end. Um, what I loved was working in different cities. We had 14 different cities every year, and they were all new. So I got to be as familiar with Albany as I am with Spokane, as I am with Albuquerque, New Orleans, and uh, and Tampa. So we don't have that in football. That's that's probably the thing I miss the most about not working with a tournament anymore. I know we're going to get to the football here and a lot of this, I'm going to let Watson do, but I was surprised a year ago when I heard, okay, we're going to go from four all the way up to 12. How did that number first come out? And is that what the delay is all about of expanding is that 12 is too many too quick well, first of all, for the listeners, they need to remember that we do have four more years with the current contract, and this four-team event's been terrific, um, but it was time to look and think about expanding, and I, I'm caught by that because others have said the same thing as if it's too big of a jump between four to 12, and I didn't really understand that until I started hearing it from other people, but the problem with eight, well, and, and <laughs> Goodness gracious, we talked about 60-some alternatives when, when the working group was coming up with its recommendation, uh, including eight. 
And a problem with eight with some uh, conference champions was you would only have a couple of uh, large berths, whereas now we have four. And it just didn't feel right to go backwards in the number of at large spots. So that, as much as anything, that led us to uh, the recommendation for 12, where you have six conference champions and then six at large. Do you think we get to 12 at some point? From hearing the commissioners talk about it, yes. Uh, everybody feels like expansion needs to happen, at least in the commissioner's room when they're talking to each other. And I, I suspect that 12 will be the number. I, I heard Greg say today that he'd be okay with eight, Greg Sankey, as long as they were the best eight with, with no spots for any conference champions. And I don't know whether that can carry the day or not. But I, I suspect eventually in the nef- next contract we'll be, uh, we'll be at, at more than four. If, <laughs> if we were to stay at four, I, I think the public would uh, not be accepting of that. As, as I said, the four's been great. But people want more football. It's gosh, incredible. Th- gosh, think about our product is football. And if we were making widgets and people wanted more widgets, we'd be thrilled. And we should be thrilled that people want more football. Amen. Watson's up in Cookville where he grew up. And Watson, I hope I've given you a pretty good amount of time. You go wherever you want to go. Bill, it, it, it's good to see you. First thing I want to throw out to let you think back is I, it's how far we have come. I mean, back in six and seven, I can remember – being with you in those BCS meetings, and we're just talking about bowl games. I mean, <laughs> and I'm representing, I'm the AD at UAB, and I'm representing Conference USA with Britain and the, and the group of five, and I know you remember that. Yeah. Um, it's unbelievable, Bill, and you've been right there in the middle of every bit of this. Just talk a little bit about how far college football is coming, how much change we've had since we were together in 06, 05, 06. Yep. I'm, I'm glad you remember that. We had some fun at those meetings. Um, we have come a long way from remember the, we started, they started the bowl coalition and then the bowl Alliance and then the BCS came along and those were all just bowl pairings exercises, just a way to make sure that the bowl games had good uh, matchups. <laughs> And that was all, that was the best the commissioners could do at the time. And how about this, Watson? It's been 30 years since we had the old bowl system where each bowl invited whoever they wanted to. <laughs> 30 years. It takes a long time to turn this battleship. And, oh. but, but when it turns, it, it begins to turn. And I, I hope, I always hope it turns in a good direction. Well, and, and I think it is. Everything has been for the betterment of college football to me, Bill. And and you're, as I say, I don't know if there's any one person that's been right in the middle of all of this as everything has happened. And, uh, and it's coming to a point now where we do need to expand. And I'm a football coach saying that. I just think we need the better teams playing each other at the end of the year. It, it, it happens in basketball. I know it's a lot easier in basketball. The physicality of this game uh, makes it tougher. When you all are together, I know one of the big questions is always, how many games can these kids handle? How do you all as a group talk through that, uh, uh, Bill, in a physicality way, in a mental way, in a education way? How many games – can these kids handle? Because to me, that's where it's got to start. Well, that is that is where it starts, almost every conversation. And uh, the fact is that there aren't many more games um, for most teams. Two will play more and, and four will play one more game, but it's not like it's a wholesale amount of ga- new games for everybody. And you'll be interested in this. One of the things that our group is doing is, yeah, look at the extra games, but also let's look at the 365-day calendar for college football. Let's let's look at spring practice dates. 
Let's look at reporting dates in July. Let's look at uh, how everything fits in with academics. And, and I think it's smart to take a step back and say, okay, yeah, there, there, there would be another game or two more in the playoff, but what about the whole year? And you follow this too, I know, Watson, about the potential rule changes to eliminate some of the contact, uh, some, of the, some of the collisions. If you can eliminate 10 plays a game, well, pretty soon you've eliminated a game – uh, worth of collisions out of the season. And I think that's healthy. I, I will say this. Everybody has an opinion about this. And coaches <laughs> generally <laughs> have their opinions, and, and they're not even unanimous on it. ADs are not unanimous. Um, but we are going to have to make, we being the commissioners and the, and the presidents who we work for, are going to make have to step back and make some hard decisions about what is good for the game in general. Bill, will there, is there any thought of trying to find a way to shorten the games? What's happened as we need to expand the playoffs, as I truly think we do, the games are getting longer. The style of offense is that I was one of the ones that was into this <laughs> no huddle, fast pace. It's changed the game. The game is not what it was when I played in the 60s, when I coached even in the 80s. I mean – People were averaging 15 throws a game in, 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 in the eighties, in the lower eighties sometimes. <laughs> and now uh, the, the number of plays bill has gone from 60 something all the way to the probably average in the eighties. And I mean, there's a lot of games in the nineties. Is there any way in the world to cut the number of plays back in these games? Is that part of your job? Are you listening to any of that thought process? Yep, that's absolutely being talked about. And I think we'll see that within the next, I don't know how long, three to five years. We'll see that. That will happen. How, what are some of the thoughts with it? Um, not stopping the ball on incomplete passes? What, what, are, are, what are even some of the little things, Bill, that you could even bring up that have been at least discussed? Well, that's the big short one. The game. That's the big one, not stopping the, the clock on incomplete passes. Um, changing the out of bounds situation some way. Um, actually, to focus, those are the two biggest ones that people are talking about. Yeah. And, and you look at the NFL bill right now. The NFL plays in the 60s, and college football is in the 80s as far as number of plays. The NFL plays a lot more games, but they have also figured out a way to shorten their game. And uh, their half times are, are, are much shorter than the college halftime. So they've done some things. I'm sure you've looked at the NFL model a little bit too. Oh, we have, we have, they've done a great job with that. And I, I, I really, just to repeat, I do think uh, incomplete passes and out of bounds plays will be where you'll see the, the changes happen. You know, we need Watson. We need to get where we FCS football, our, our top, the top 10 conferences, have more to say about how their game is being run. And with all due respect to a D2 or D3 school, and I love D2 and D3, but we need to have more autonomy among our 100 and what is it now, 130 schools about how our game is being run. And I think we'll get there also. Bill, you just nailed it. I 100% agree. There's a point in time to me that the Division one, the FBS schools should be making their own rules. And and uh, it's it, the Division two guys don't even come close to the issues the Division one guys have. I've always said that. I've never understood that. And is that close to, do you think, is that close to ever happening? I wouldn't classify it as close like next week, <laughs> but I, I, I believe it will happen. And before too long. Yep. Uh, another area to me, Bill, as all of this uh, conference moving around and, and Big Ten taking these two, SEC taking these, Big, Big 12 looking for this, has that slowed this down some with all of this in, in play right now? I don't, I don't see it. No, I don't think it has. I think neutral at best. Uh, we still have the same commissioners at the table. 
uh, except for Bob Bowlesby having retired, of course. Uh, the same issues are still at play. So, no, I, I don't. I don't see. I think that's neutral as far is as that, as far as CFP changing. Yeah, Bill, is that why maybe some of these bigger conferences as they grow in schools, if I'm them, I would 100% want to expand the playoffs um, because there's going to be some really good football teams all the way down five, six, seven, eight deep in in possibly the, the SEC and the Big Ten. So if I'm them, I would be pushing for expanding the playoffs big time. Well, Greg has Greg Sankey's made his position on it real clear uh, since last summer. He thought 12 was the right number, and he thought the breakdown of six conference champions and six at larges was the right number. Uh, we'll see if we can get there. Watson, I think we got to let him go in just a second, but I want to okay. I want to toss one last thing out there. Why you, have you, you want some more tacos? Uh, they weren't bad. They were really good. <laughs> uh, so feel free to bring okay. some more. Why have you not written a book? You've got all these experiences. There's a book waiting to happen. We are, people like Watson and I have been around so many remarkable, funny, smart people. And I think you'll agree, Watson, if we had only written down about half the stories that we've heard and witnessed, uh, oh. we, could, we could write books and do pretty well. <laughs> Oh, and, and as I said earlier, George, not to just pat him on the back here, but he's been right in the middle of, of all this since I've been around, and I was around for 40 years. So Bill's been right in the middle of all of this. Yeah, I think Watson and I are about the same age. Are you 71? 72. 72. Yeah. Okay, I'll, you got me a little bit. I'll okay, be, take, I'll, a, good, I'll, take I'll, a good look as I shift the camera. There's 72-year-old oh, Watson he is, Brown. He is still <laughs> the youngest 72. Well, Bill, I'll, that's blonde I'll, hair. I'll be, George says it's gray hair, white hair. It's blonde it's hair. Blonde. Well, well, I'll be caught up with you in September. And uh, you know who's our age, too, Watson, is uh, Roy Williams. Roy will be 72 in August. Oh, gracious. Yep. yep. Thanks for Look coming over. Fogies. We're about to be left behind, Bill. You're still <laughs> going, man. Hey. Represent us all well. Hey, Watson, half of the audience just tuned us out when they found out how old we are. <laughs> You're and I'm right. no spring chicken. Thank you for coming over here and doing this. Thank you, George. Watson, great to talk to you. Take care. Good to talk to you, man. Good luck. Thank you. Bill for Hancock you is the executive director of the college football playoff. When we saw him earlier today, I wanted to get him on like that. And it was uh, really cool that we were able to pull that.